in the nation's heartland, surrounded by farmland that produces food that you and I consume, and also cornfields that produce ethanol that powers the eyes on Indy cars. Welcome to Iowa Speedway. The field is ready to go. Drivers are in the car. Now, as Kevin indicated, we were told in the driver's meeting this is a sold out crowd. You may notice some empty seats, but it's because of weather. The temperature is cool. It's also kind of windy. Look, east winds at 14 miles an hour. It rained hard earlier today. And in fact, the weather forecast says there's about a 60% chance of rain even for the next couple of hours. But right now, we are good and looking forward to some great racing. Well, the two championship contenders are, of course, Dario Franchitti and Will Power. Now, Will has the edge in poles, but both drivers have won three races this year. Dario has by far led the most laps, but Will has picked up the most bonus points, and that is a very important factor in the battle for the season-long championship. All right, it's time to go down to trackside and get this show on the Iowa road. Speedway IndyCar fans, now for the most famous words in racing, the chair of the Iowa Corn Promotion Board, Mr. Dick Gallagher. Drivers, start your ethanol-powered ethanol engine. engine. Well, the field is coming to life. Uh, the individual drivers saying their row is hot. And at the front of the field, Honda's fastest seat in sports sweepstake has been very popular. There are five chances to win remaining. Log on to shophonda.com to enter. This week's lucky winner is Nicole Hill from Fort Dodge, Iowa. By logging on to shophonda.com, Nicole won the opportunity to start tonight's race in the IZOD two-seater driven by Al Unser, Jr. Nicole Hill, can you hear me in the booth? I can, Bob. Well, did you ever think that you'd win the contest and be in this position? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be quite a thrill. Here we go. Al Unser Jr. up ahead of you, and uh, you're gonna get the thrill of your life here in just a minute. How'd that feel? That felt awesome. <laughs> Are you an IZOD IndyCar Series fan? I am a huge one. Good, well, enjoy the ride, Nicole, and uh, Glad that you could have the opportunity to do this once in a lifetime opportunity. Thanks, Bob. Okay. All right, at the top of your screen is the starting grid presented by Mother's Car Polish. Danica Patrick up front for the first time since 2008. And you see the rest of the starting lineup. Of course, Takuma Sato on the pole for tonight's race, but he did crash during the warm-up last night and had an incident with Alex Tagliani. And we are welcoming back to the booth, by the way, uh, Dan Weldon, who was down on uh, pit side for the uh, pit walk. That was nice. Yeah, it was, out of a, breath. It was a lot of fun, yeah. I am a little uh, out of breath, but it was great fun. There's a tread cam that we'll be using tonight as the cars go right over it into your face. All right, let's take a look now at the Sunoco pit strategy, Jan. And first of all, when you see that maximum green range, that's 77 laps when it's a little bit warmer. Believe it or not, as it gets colder, you use more fuel, but this is the pit windows that it'll give you. Now, if you think about pit strategy, you got to think about Scott Dixon. Let's get more from Kevin Lee. Two laps and to Mike Hall is with Scott Dixon. Scott has not started this far back since 01. How did you tell him to approach this? <laughs> uh, it's funny. Uh, we just we talked about the same things we talked about in our race meeting. It's just you got to make smart. You got to be smart about what you do. Our goal is try to get to the front. Obviously, that's very difficult from where we are. Uh, I'm glad we have a, a driver of Scott's experience starting where he is, as opposed to some of the other people that. Uh, uh, are starting around him with less experience. And that is Mike Hall who calls strategy for Scott Dixon. 
There is Scott back in the 23rd position after a miserable qualifying effort uh, yesterday after I picked him to win the pole position. <laughs> Look at the fans on their feet welcoming the IZOT IndyCar Series to their state and we must admit that it's great to come here because they are really enthusiastic fans and Dan I know you've been signing a lot of autographs even Jan was signing autographs this <laughs> afternoon it was great <laughs> and that's and that's it this is a great racetrack has a great atmosphere real energy to it it's a short boring kind of track and uh, I'll be expecting uh, some great racing well, let's see who will dominate on the bull ring tonight. They line up perfectly two by two through turns number three and number four. The Iowa Corn Indy 250 presented by Pioneer is green. Here we go. Wow, Danica was just didn't get on the on the power. And J.R. Hildebrand, he got on the power and got very, very loose as he exited turn four. So these cool conditions that are way different than what we've seen, you know, leading into the race. Tony Kanaan has jumped into second position as we go on board. Will Power, who's in fifth. And you can see on board that they're probably being a little bit cautious. The temperature, you know, tends to make the tires come in a lot slower. And uh, we've seen at this race before with cool temperatures, people spinning on the uh, first lap. Me being one of them, I have to say. <laughs> there you see Danica slotted into fourth position right now. It's Santos, Kanaan, Franchini, Patrick. Hildebrand and power back to six. This is the second race that Takuma Sato has led in his IndyCar career. He led 23 laps earlier this year in Brazil. How about Scott Dixon already? In the first almost three laps, he has picked up four positions. So Scott Dixon up to 19th from 23rd. And you can, you can see him, he's aggressive, he's confident, and uh, you know, he was running the high line in the warm-up. Not many people were doing that, and you can see it's working out for him, driving right by Alex Tagliani. So that will move him up to 18th position. There's Mike Conway, who's dropped back from his starting position. Now getting to the high side of Tagliani. Couldn't quite pull off that move like uh, Scott Dixon did. It's uh, it's very, very difficult. Oh, and you can see Dario. Wow. Yeah, Dar Dario's moved up on the two KV Racing Technologies cars. And again, very, very aggressive. Likes to be leading and seems like he has a very, very good race car right now. Contrails coming off of the rear wings, indicating a heavy atmosphere here tonight. Oh, he's, he might get the lead here, Bob. He might pass two cars in one corner. And by golly, is he going to do it? Sato fighting back on the outside. Nope. Takuma maintains the lead, but here comes Dixon once again to the low side. And that's Iowa racing at its best, three wide. We're only six laps into this, and, uh, you know, Dario showing that he is taking no prisoners, wants to lead, and, you know, was great in warm-up too, and you can see, very, very confident in that race car. Danica Patrick in fourth position, Hildebrand not too far behind in fifth. Look at this battle between teammates, Sato number five, and we're on board with Tony Kanaan. And before this race started, those two teammates, Sato and TK, had a plan. TK was going to try and get right up behind Sato and protect him from whoever was behind him. And as you saw, that was Dario Franchini, and that did not happen. Robbie? Well, you saw Danica Patrick drop off at the start. She wanted to get a good jump on Taku, but George Close told me before the race that his thoughts were, don't worry about it if you lose a spot or two spots or even three. The race is still you know, a long way ahead of you. So she dropped back, but I don't think there's anything wrong with the number seven. Meanwhile, Dario Franchini begins to stretch out the advantage just a little bit as we drop back here to find out what's going on with James Hinchcliffe, who is seventh, and on board with Ryan Briscoe trying to get that position. And, and you saw, and you saw that Bob James Hinchcliffe just came up into uh, in, into Ryan Briscoe's air, and just it made Ryan just push up the track. You can see Ryan's got a good race car, but when cars move around, it's very difficult to stay flat out, which is very important around this track to complete an overtaking maneuver. So Briscoe moves up to seventh position. James Hinchcliffe in the 06 car back to eighth. 12 laps, make that 13 laps into 250. This race is going to go by very quickly with 17 second laps. It's Franchitti, Sato, Kanan, Patrick, and Hildebrand. The Firestone Treadcam has the cars coming right at you. 
Right now it is Dario Franchitti with about a six-tenths of a second lead. There he went, right over your head. He has about a six-tenths of a second lead on Takuma Sato, the pole sitter. And on is running in third position. Here is Ryan hunter Ray, who is back in the eighth position. And right behind him is James Hinchcliffe. Now, James had said earlier today that although, and you heard Oriol Serbia in the pre race show talk about he was not happy with the car in final practice, same thing for James Hinchcliffe, said the car was super loose. Obviously, they've got that fixed. And Marco Andretti has really moved up the most positions since the start of the race as we have a caution. You are seven seconds behind the lead. And yellow, a crash. Yellow, yellow. James Jakes. One of the Dale Coin cars into the safer barrier. He's talking about Marco Andretti, who had moved up to 11th position, gaining six since the start of the race, but now we have a slowdown. And by the way, even though it's only lap 24, this is the kind of racetrack you see. That's just what I was going to say. Everyone will take the opportunity and pit under yellow because you saw earlier a green stop cost you almost two laps. Yeah, and that's a, that's a big risk, so you're absolutely right. But, uh, you know, I'm surprised we got an incident so early on. I thought the race would kind of play out a little bit more before this, but uh, certainly going to spice up the racing. There'll be some action in the pits. Two abreast restarts, of course. Now, James Jakes didn't appear to damage oh, the car all wow. that much. Oh, wow, it was across the bump, wasn't oh, it, Dan? Oh, yeah, did. thing just jumped. And that's what happens when you go across that bump. The car gets unstable, but look, he's in dirty air. When you're amongst other cars, that, that problem gets accentuated, and you could see that, you know, he went over the bump in dirty air, he lost the rear of the car and, and spun around and hit the wall. Professor B told us all about dirty air in last race, and it caught with James Jakes, who is climbing out of his car. Okay, sponsor on the car, Acorn Stair Lips. But on lap number 25, we do have a pit stop coming up. And when... Uh, like Jan, when you when you watch that, you can see the cars here snap very very quickly. This is a boring type track. The radius of the corners are very tight. You add that bump to turn one and two, and it makes it a handful. This car, these cars are not easy to drive around this racetrack. A lot of drivers are saying that what they really want is they want the rear to be progressive, but on these speedway tires, they're not. Just like you say, they tend to slip. Kevin. Here comes Will Power, the championship leader. You can see he's on board. He's in an unfamiliar pit position, but he does have a clear exit. Power is coming in. They'll change all four tires. They are not going to make any adjustments, and Lindy Will Power is out. Oh, and he comes together with Charlie Kimball. Kimball was coming into his pit stall while Power was going out, and heavy contact for the championship co-leader. They'll back Power out. Kimball is backwards. James Hinchcliffe also had to wait, but definite, as Kevin was saying, severe damage up there. If it's only the nose cone, they may be able to get it done and not lose a lap. And that's, that's going to be important right now. And, uh, you know, the Penske guys are one of the best in the business at getting these changes done. So we'll have to see if he gets out before uh, he goes lap down. Ryan Briscoe gaining three positions as we take a look at our Sunoco race off pit lane. Sunoco, proud manufacturer of ethanol. Now, just like you said, Dan, they so much do not want to go a lap down. They weren't able to finally get that nose changed. They'll quickly try to get up to speed and come right back on the pit lane. And they'll be prepared for that when he comes in. He'll hopefully catch up with the pack and give the team the most possible time to get it changed. But that is the way the championships are won and lost. Yep, they sent him and... Well, that is the responsibility of the crew members to send. It looked like Charlie Kimball was a fair way back, but no, that you don't want to wave your driver if you know the position in Charlie Kimball. Now, Charlie Kimball was in the fast lane, though, wasn't he? He should have been one more lane down he, since he was a, coming into his pit. He, sh he should have been, and, um, you know, he, he wasn't. He didn't have anybody around him. You know, that's not really to say he should be doing that, but it's definitely the fault of the person pulling out raw power. Right, but Dan, I think what it was was that a crew member normally looks up when you see a guy in a fast lane, you think it's clear. Kevin? What? Power coming in again. He's going to have to get the nose cone changed. They are prepared for that. Charlie Kimball is coming in right in front of him to address his damage. He's got significant damage to the left side pod. They are going to take their time with this, but not too much time getting the front nose cone off. It's all one assembly, and they're having some difficulty getting it off. 
It's taking a little bit of time. They need to stay on the lead lap. That's the most important thing to still give them an opportunity in this race. They will try to get it on and get the wing changed the way they like and power is away, Bob. And it looks like he is going to successfully stay on the lead lap as the cars come off of corner number four. But Will Power has had problems here in the first set of pit stops making contact with Charlie Kimball as he was coming in and Kimball was going out. Under caution here at Iowa Speedway, Dario Franchitti is your leader. Race fans young and old are here at Iowa Speedway tonight for the Iowa Corn Indy 250. Next Saturday, Versus and NBC welcome you to the most epic race ever, the Tour de France. It all starts on Versus live at 8 a.m. Eastern, followed by an encore at 2 o'clock Eastern on NBC. Watch the world's best riders compete in the most prestigious cycling event of the year. The Tour de France begins next Saturday on Versus and NBC. And quickly you can see that certainly Charlie Kimball Doug did come from the outside lane. He should have been on the inner lane, and that's why there was a miscue. Lined up two by two for the restart here. It will come on lap number 33, and Dario Franchitti jumps out to the advantage as Tony Kanan is tucked in right behind him. They head for turn number one. This is the fifth race that Dario has led this year, and that ties him with Will Power for the most races led. And speaking of power, he's back in 23rd. We'll keep an eye on him as we watch up front. And look at Elio Castroneves. Oh, right there he goes. Of his teammate. That was an <laughs> impressive move. He was committed from the get-go. God, love that tread cam. And Dario definitely looks very strong, very early on the run. He's got, got great confidence in that car. These cool conditions aren't affecting how he gets up to speed. He seems much better than anybody else. Look There's at Serbia. Serbia. Yeah. Maybe Ryan Briscoe has a bit of a problem here. He's dropped back to sixth position. He restarted in third. He started 10th, however, so he has moved up from his original starting position. You see that Danica Patrick also lost a spot or two on that restart. There seems to be something with Danica when you have starts and restarts that the car just doesn't come to life, and she's a sitting duck there for the first few corners. And we're on board with Ryan Briscoe. Again, when he's behind other cars, you see the amount of steering lock he puts in. That's because the car is pushing. Here's our pioneer biggest movers, Scott Dixon from 23rd to 12th, up 11. Castro Neves up 9, and Marco Andretti also up 9. Andretti Autosport teammates side by side. That's Marco in the red and black, and Danik, of course, in the familiar GoDaddy black and red. And you can see when a car is outside, the car on the inside, the radius becomes very tight, particularly at one and two over that bump. It's very hard to, to you know, to not push up into, into that car. And that's why you see people completing the moves on the outside, not the inside. Now Marco Andretti was very happy with his car last night in evening practice. And he said, you know, I think I have a great car, but last year I thought I had a great car and went straight backwards in the race. So he said, I don't want to be too overconfident, but it looks like it's coming to him. Bob, we talked about in the open, what's important here is how good is your car at the end of a stint? Right. And we're going to kind of find that out as they go longer and longer on a set of tires. And there's Elio working that outside line again. Very, very good up there. His car seems to be stable. It's not moving around. The bump is a little bit better on the high line, but it's just difficult to complete that move when you're up against somebody that's running at similar speed to you. Sato isn't doing bad. You know, you never know when you uh, have a wreck and you try to fix the car, whether it's going to be as good as it was. It probably isn't, but he's staying right up there with the leaders as Sato and Castro Nevis battle it out for the third position. Kevin? James Hinchcliffe was running eight before that caution coming into the stop. They couldn't get the fuel hose engaged, so he dropped all the way back to 22nd. They did come in and top off right at the end of that caution, and he's starting to pick up speed. The car's still good, but Hinchcliffe lost all that track position. Back in 18th and 19th, Sebastian Saavedra and James Hinchcliffe. And Castro Nevis completes the pass of Sato, and he's now third up ahead, Franchini and Canaan. And here's Serbia. He's on the move again. You know, he likes that outside lane. He was strong at Milwaukee. And, uh, you know, look at him pushing and uh, really pressuring Sato, going down the inside into turn one here. Well, we've said it again. We'll say we've said it before. We'll say it again. The Newman Haas team has just been outstanding in the series this year. And this typically is not a strong racetrack for them. So the fact that oh, yellow, uh -oh, yellow. 
And a car into the wall. Mike Conway. Mike yeah. Conway. And I think Anna Beatrice. Or is it Justin Wilson? Conway has made contact with the outside safer barrier and comes to rest on the inside of the racetrack. So the second caution comes out here on lap number 46. Mike Conway's really had a tough time of it since Indianapolis. He had a lot of momentum going in there, but just it's it's not uh, it's not fallen his way. You're right. It was Anna Beatrice also involved in that incident. She's got damage at least on the right front of that car. And you can really see when the cars get amongst traffic, you know, they really move around a lot more over those bumps. Turn three and four here has it has a way of feeling like the, the track drops away from you and that outside tire almost feels like it's running in the rain a little. It, it just slides. All right, here comes the replay on this most recent incident involving Conway and Ana Beatrice. Definitely contact with each other first. Look at all the parts. That was Vitor Mira wow. that got a big piece of bodywork. And it's a very difficult view, but I, I've, I've got to say, guys, I think probably Conway was trying to get underneath Anna Beatrice, hit the bump. She was probably pinning him down, and they got into one another. You've got to give the guy room or girl room on the inside when, when you're trying to get around the outside of them. Kind of like the incident last night in final practice when Sato and Tagliani got together. Exactly. Will Power hadn't moved up very much in that green stint. He's up only to 21st, Kevin. And the car's not handling the way they would like. They have a front toe issue, which essentially means that the wheels are not aligned the way they would like. So they are going to come in. They're one of several that's going to take advantage of this caution. But Will Power desperately needed an opportunity to uh, work on the car here. That is, of course, Vitor Amira. We saw the piece of bodywork that he hit. That's damaged his front wing, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's other cars that had damage. There was shrapnel all over the place. There was a big debris field at the scene of the crash. We'll take another break and be back more for the Iowa Corn Indy 250. Let's shine the spotlight on Iowa corn. This state is the leader in corn and ethanol production. One gallon produces nearly, one bushel rather, produces nearly three gallons of ethanol. And ethanol production provides nearly 50,000 jobs in the state. And we're glad to have them as a sponsor of tonight's event. Here's Lindy Thaxton. I am with Dick Gallagher, the chairman of the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Tell us what the benefits are of corn ethanol, not just for the IndyCar drivers out here, but for everyone. The benefit that we really see the most is it gives us a chance to run E10, E15, E85 blends. Another real benefit of it is it reduces our dependency on foreign oil. It's environmentally friendly, it's renewable, and it's just a high performance fuel that we can use daily. You got to tell them to start their engines. How was that for you? Oh, that was exciting. It really was. Dick Gallagher, thank you. Let's go back to the race coverage. Bob? Yeah, you saw the grandstands nearly full, and there are a lot of people sitting on the bank up above turns one and two. A great, great night of racing here at Iowa Speedway. There they are. Big uh, hospitality area. All right, let's take a look again at the uh, incident that we are currently under caution for and yeah it looks like that Anna broke loose didn't she oh she got loose right over that bump yep. and uh... that's a contact with Vitor Mira the shrapnel coming off and you can see all these little parts flying through the air anyone that's Saavedra Hinchcliffe all these cars coming through you got to be concerned certainly well already for Vitor Mira it looks like he's had his repairs but for everyone else you, you definitely want to come in and get tires because you can they could be cut and I think that really goes to show you, when you see that debris coming off the car, how fast we're going around this short racetrack. I mean, when you consider we're averaging about 177 miles an hour, it's uh, pretty impressive. Dario's fastest lap in the race is 176.6. Let me look down through here. I think the fastest lap so far has been uh, maybe Marco Andretti at 177.5. And there's, uh, there's Marco, he's, he's Mr. King of the High Line. And around <laughs> here, if you can get that working for you, that is, is, is a great place to pass because it makes you less vulnerable. When you're, when you're tight on the inside, the cars can pin you down. That's when you have to get back out of the power, but let's go down to Robin. 
Hey, fellas, the thing that's amazing is Castro never said he was going to take it easy. Obviously, he was lying. He's charging. There's a guy that needs a victory because, look, Will Powers kind of stole the spotlight of that team. Briscoe's been fast all year, but Elio's kind of been the forgotten guy other than getting bad mouthed every now and then by Dario. And I think one thing Dan Weldon said that's really true, nobody's going to be happier to see a street race than good old Mike Conway. And we return to the street and road courses in two weeks in Toronto, Ontario. They're still cleaning up the debris back there in the backstretch from the two cars that crashed. Brankiti, Canaan, Castro Nevis, Sato, and Serbia are the top five here. And Bob, I'd be interested to see. Dario was very good on the initial starts. We saw at Milwaukee that Dario was good on a short run, but as on the long run, it was Canaan. Yep. Now, is that going to happen tonight? I, th I, I think it's going to be very interesting because I think that can be the case. I stood at turn one and turn two at the warm up, and Canaan did lap after lap after lap. And speaking to the Ganassi guys, they think that's their biggest competition tonight. One of the things we want to look at, Bob, is how many people will pit. The leaders may or may not, but I think you can see by how many teams are set out, you kind of have a 50-50 mix here. I would say more than half will pit, but there'll be some people who decide to stay out. We will see shortly. Pits right now closed, but the pit crews are laid out, some of them ready for their driver to come in. Dan Weldon, we showed uh, in our last race a couple of weeks ago him at uh, St. Petersburg, his home, and here he was at Disney World in Orlando with the family. Pretty cool, huh, Grand Marshal? It was fantastic, <laughs> and, uh, you know, to, to, to be there with, uh, obviously, my wife Susie and uh, sons, um, Oliver and Sebastian, was, was phenomenal. Disney took absolutely great care of us and uh, was honored to be the Grand Marshal. I'm only the second Grand Marshal this year, if I can brag a little bit. Is that Super, wow. Super Bowl nice. champions were the only other Grand Marshal, but uh, <laughs> had, a, had a wonderful time. Now, did you tell him you were 26, like you told us yesterday? I told him I was 24. Uh, we've checked. Hey, yeah, we have checked. <laughs> and it's 33. <laughs> oh, I thought Yarm was my friend. And you can see, we're working yeah. more on Vitor's car, so there was obviously some damage there. That was one of the first things that Jan said to me this morning on the way to the track. I know how old he is. <laughs> I'm just waiting for my gifts from both of you. I haven't received anything well, that's, yet. Well, that's in two weeks in Toronto. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not sure what it's going to be, but <laughs> something big. Something Danica big. Patrick uh, down in a ninth position. And let's go down to Kevin Lee once again with an update on Vitor. They continue to work on his car. They're working on the right front toe link. They came in a few laps earlier and they changed the front nose cone, but they didn't have the part that they needed, so they had to hustle back to the garage area. The golf cart just arrived, so that's what they're working on now. And now Will Power is coming in. They're going to be doing the same thing. They're working on that right front suspension. The wheels weren't aligned the way they like, so the caution came at a good time for that team. And Will Power is hoping to get a good handling race car, stay on the lead lap, and hope he can still score some points here tonight. Now, the reason he had to turn the steering wheel all the way to the right is that that exposes the nut you need to get to to change the toe. Now, typically, if there's a problem with the toe, you'll, you'll notice it on the onboard. We, we as drivers, we like to run the wheel slightly to the right. And uh, I noticed that uh, Will Powers was dead straight. When you run it dead straight, you kind of cross your arms in, in, the, in this kind of racetrack because it's such a tight radius. So it'll uh, be interesting to see when we come back. Will Power has dropped 40 points to the rears of Dario Franchitti, but we are still early on in the Iowa Corn Indy 250 presented by Pioneer. Stay with us. Versus welcomes you back to Iowa Speedway near Newton, Iowa. We are live for the Iowa Corn Indy 250 presented by Pioneer. Marco Andretti is in sixth position. He has gained 11 spots since the green flag dropped at the beginning of the race. And while we were away, we eavesdropped on some radio conversation. So what do you think happened with the tires, Marco? No, I was just saying we were picking up a lot of crap because they made us go off the track back here. Does it feel like it? Yeah, I'm just going to have to work to get it off. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. So, Bob, what are he saying there? They, they'd done a few laps before it went yellow, so the tire temperatures were up. Now, when, when they when they have to do a restart and they haven't got new tires on, as we look at Michael here, his boss and dad, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, 
they, they have to work the tires very hard to clean them up, and that's what Marco was talking about. He's typically very, very aggressive on the, uh, the initial lap, so he should clean up his tires pretty quickly. But you might see uh, cars skate around because of, you know, the debris that they've picked up, or I shouldn't say debris, the, the dirt. Yeah, right. Well, we see several making pit stops, including Danica Patrick and Oriol Servia. Kevin? Power was in just a moment ago, but they came in with a pit for flow, so he came back in here to top off with everyone else, and he's away. And Kevin, the reason for that is if you if you enter a closed pit, your penalty for that is you must then pit when the pits are open and make a four-tire stop. So he was serving that and got fresh tires. Ed Carpenter also exits pit lane in this Sarah Fisher car. Kevin Blanche, who is the uh, one of the technical people for the eyes on IndyCar series. The cleanup continues. It's been quite a cleanup back there as there was again a lot of debris scattered all over the racetrack by the contact at the safer barrier by Anna Beatrice and Mike Conway. Now just keep mentally let's keep track of who pitted. If it turns out that it stays green for a long time and the leaders have to pit under green all those cars you just saw in pit lane are going to get a free pass up to the front. So we'll just track that and the reason the leaders wouldn't pit is because the saying is yellow breeds yellow so they're thinking there's going to be more and absolutely it does around this racetrack <laughs> yeah, in these right. cool conditions <laughs> another thing that i'm noticing is scott dixon is already up to eighth position he's going to be happy with that considering where he started up 15 positions from his starting spot and you can see the cars now beginning to form the two abreast Alignment as they exit corner number two down the back stretch. We'll get a restart this time. And Dario pulling away a little bit from <laughs> Tony Kanan on the outside. Behind them, Castro Nevis, Sato, Andretti, and Hildebrand, the top six. Off of corner number four, and the green flag waves again. We are back to racing at Iowa Speedway. Dario got a great restart again. Obviously, you know, racing with somebody he's comfortable with, Tony Kanaan. Tony slotted right in behind, and, uh, you know, Elio is going to be trying to get to the front real quick as you see him go for that low line. On board with Marco, and Sato to his right. And look at Castro Nevis down to the inside of Tony Kanaan. He's got him. He took second spot. Or almost. <laughs> Tony's not going to give it up easy. He, he's, a, he's a racer, but, you know, Castro Neves has, has obviously got a quick race car and completes the pass. And here comes Marco yeah. Andretti to the inside of Tony Kanaan. I was just about to say, now he's got to worry about Marco. And you see Marco move right up to get in the draft of Castro Neves to help him complete that pass, and, and he does that very well. I've got to tell you, Castro Neves is going to want to attack Dario. Penske are, are going to be seeing this situation. Whoa! Oh. Hildebrand <laughs> and Briscoe. And guys, that's why IndyCar racing is what it is. It's so close. We're doing this at high speeds, and it's fun to watch. That's the battle for sixth position right now. Hildebrand has it. And in fact, Ryan has dropped back just a little bit, but it was a wheel to wheel battle there for a moment as now we see Marco closing in on second place. Elio, Marco's got a good race car. He does. And when you see these contrails coming off the wings, we're always talking about how much downforce these cars have. At this racetrack, 4,600 pounds of downforce. Jan, and I gotta tell you, this racetrack is very, very physical. The amount of weight that goes through that steering, it's incredibly hard to turn. It's not like your road car at home where you've got your pa <laughs> power steering. It is a workout in itself. And you'll see some people's arms fatigue towards the end of the race, not these guys up front. And Jan pointed yep. out yesterday that a typical lap at this track, you are turning 66% of the time. And Bob, more to that point, for over 10 seconds of an 18-second lap, you're over 3 Gs. Your maximum is 4.5 Gs. That's why the steering mode is so high. Man. And who said IndyCar drivers aren't athletes? Yeah, this really. is exactly why. Yep. 
Okay, let's go through the field. Lindy Thaxton will start with our leader, Dario. And Dario is managing to hold on to the lead. You'll remember last year he had a gearbox issue. Still, though, he led 69 laps here. He is strong here. He has no complaints about his car so far to Chip Ganassi, who calls strategy for him. Behind him from rival Team Penske, there's Elio Castroneves, who Dario says likes to block out on the racetrack. Team Penske has never won here, but nighttime has been the right time for Team Penske recently as the team has won six night races since 09. And look behind him, there's Marco Andretti. He says, this is where I need to have a turnaround for my season. You've heard earlier, he's trying to clean off those tires. Look behind him, there's Tony Kanaan. Tony Kanaan has, Tony Kanaan has lost radio communication. They can hear him, he cannot hear them. He has wanted no changes on his car. He says that it feels good, his teammate, Takuma Sato, there he is right behind him, who started on the pole position. Before then, his best oval qualifying was fourth in Texas. Jimmy Vassar has been telling him, do not put yourself in a bad position. This is a long race. Be patient. Well, they had to make a big wing adjustment on the front of J.R. Hildebrand's car. He is uh, the number four driver, a ton of front wing. He had push. He missed his pit box early, but right now J.R. Hildebrand is in the sixth position after starting fourth. Ryan Briscoe in the number six. Uh, Roger Pinsky told me that he has some understeer. He was really loose on entry, but it looks like we might have a problem with Elio Castroneves as it looks like he may be coming in right now. Wow. Another tire going down for Elio, just like last week at Milwaukee. And that's 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 cool luck right there. Obviously a fast race car, but you know what? With the with the way the yellows work, he can get the laps back. But Jan, he's going to lose a couple, correct? Wow, that is that is just really bad fortune. And that's what we were talking about. If the field stays at green, he will lose one lap, almost two. Yeah. So two of the Penske drivers have had problems here. Will Power with a collision with Charlie Kimball on pit lane, and now Elio makes an unscheduled pit stop for a tire that was deflating, just like he happened in Milwaukee last week. He was leading the race and looking good after the pit, after the pit crew got him out quickly, but you could see the left rear going low, and he came into the pits, got the tire replaced, and unfortunately, lost the victory probably because of that. And Tim Sindrick did say that that left rear tire from Milwaukee, when it came in, they just put their thumb on it yeah. and it was flat. Yep. And Bob, when the luck's not going your way, it just seems to snowball. Yeah. He really has, you know, had some fast race cars the last couple of races, but it just doesn't work for him. But don't count him out just yet. You can see the interval there between the leader, Dario Franchitti, and the second, third, and fourth place cars. Now, Marco Andretti, because of Elio's pit stop, has moved up to second position as Scott Dixon now runs in the seventh spot behind Ryan Briscoe. There's Dixon, who has moved up 16 positions since the start of the race. And you can see, Bob, he just uses pretty much the high line through turns one and two. Obviously, the car feels much more comfortable up there. You know, that's going to give him the opportunity to overtake. But you don't really see him on the low line. And doing that extra distance is going to slow him down just that little bit. Now, right behind him, you saw the blue Telemundo cover colors of Oriol Servia. Now, Servia is the lead car of those who pit it. So he's right behind Dixon, and he's done an extra pit stop. So that. He's exactly where he wants to be. And speaking to him, he, he was very confident after the warm-up. And uh, like I said, the momentum, like it's not going for Elio, it really seems to be going for Oriol Servia. Okay, let's go down to Robbie with a continuation of Through the Field. Ryan, when I was talking about the number two of Oriol Servia, I mean, it was a surprise. They had the stuff laid out, but just in front of him, Ryan Briscoe had his stuff laid out. But they said, hey, we're going to bring it in, take a gamble. He was in fifth place. He dropped back to 12th on lap 63, but he's already worked his way up. You know, almost to the top five. I think Oriol Servia has the car he liked in the first practice and in qualifying, not like the car he had in warm-up yesterday. And the other members of the top ten behind Oriol Servia in ninth position is Graham Rahal, and in tenth spot is Danica Patrick. And on that last lap, Servia ran faster than the leaders. It's really it's flying. There is the leader, Dario Franchitti. By nine. He's led all but seven laps so far. We're on lap number 88. 
Behind him, Marco Andretti, Tony Kanaan, Takuma Sato, and J.R. Hildebrand at Iowa Speedway. Back at Iowa Speedway, we had already thrown to a commercial break for our local affiliates, and so you were not able to see on nonstop. But Will Power has had a very hard contact with the outside safer barrier. There you see Roger Penske, the car owner, very concerned about uh, his driver, Clive Howell, also. We were on board uh, watching Will when it happened, and we'll see if we can determine exactly what happened here. Oof. It just got loose yeah. over that bump, and when it snaps here, you know, it, 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 it's very hard to recover. It snapped very quickly. Huge hit. Huge Watch hit. this. And listen. Outside. Outside. Clear. I, you know, he, what you saw there was he was overtaking Vitor Mira. He yep. was going in on a tighter line, and over that bump, it just... It just snapped. He got out of the power, but unfortunately for Will, he hit at the worst possible angle. You know, he had a, a back injury, and, and he hit gearbox first, and, and that puts a lot of the impact through your lower back. Hopefully, he'll be okay. Well, he's sitting on the side pod. Now he gets up and will walk to the Phillips emergency care vehicle, and that is good to see. Will Power. Earlier in the race, had contact with Charlie Kimball on pit lane, and now this accident has knocked him out of the race and will be a serious blow to his championship hopes. Here's the uh, earlier incident in which he pulled out and watched Charlie Kimball come across his bow. And that damage, of course, they have been working on trying to get that back, but it was not handling the way that he wanted. Lindy. And with Dario Franchitti, Tony Kanaan, you remember the radio problems, they can hear him. He has radioed in and said, I have absolutely nothing for Dario Franchitti. This will be all about points for me tonight. He has asked for no changes. Same for Marco Andretti. They asked him, do you want any wing adjustments? He said, no, I'm really happy. Just tires and Sunoco ethanol in for Franchitti. He does not want any changes as well. Tony Kanaan out in 7.4, Dario out in 7, Andretti in 9.4, Bob. And our Sunoco race off pit lane. Kanan moves up one, Sato two, and Reddy loses two positions, going from second to fourth. Sunoco, proud manufacturer of ethanol. And I don't think we'll be talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the pit situation that we had at Milwaukee. Dario has an easy in now because of Will's exit of the race, and Scott has that, Scott Dixon has that easy out. And something happened to Oriol Servia because Oriol should have made a faster pit stop, but he dropped back. He's now behind. Well, he scored ahead of Patrick, but you can see on the road that he's behind Danica. So he should have picked up positions because he wouldn't have had to take as much fuel right. as everyone else, but something went amiss. You know, I was sitting in the grandstand last weekend in Milwaukee, and a lot of fans around me saying, why do they have to bring these sweepers out every every time there's a yellow? Well, there's a very good reason for that, Dan. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a huge marble buildup, and, uh, you know, also with the debris, they, 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 Firestone do an absolutely fantastic job with the tire. But when, when you have a big incident like this, the shards of carbon can cut those tires very, very quickly. And the safety team do a great job of making the track safe for the drivers. Charlie Kimball's car looks like is being pushed back perhaps behind the wall. Looks like he's coming back to his pits after going in. Remember, he had that water leak. Yep. and that hole in the side. So I imagine they took it behind the wall. Now they're going to bring it back out. Okay. And what they do, they use that sand to soak up the fluid and then they, they blow it off. Obviously, you know, fluid on, on, an, on an oval when you're doing over 170 miles an hour is not what you want. And uh, they, they, they make sure that that's dried up and then they, they get the uh, sand away with the blowers. And with the two abreast restarts, you want... <laughs> yeah, you want all the road. <laughs> yeah, a track that doesn't have any marbles or anything else on it for that matter. That's, Go ahead. Sorry, that, that, and that's one thing. Like I say, I've, I've touched on Firestone before. They do a phenomenal, phenomenal job of uh, constantly improving the tire. This is J.R. Hildebrand leaving the pits. And look at all the people. He's got one. Whoa, <laughs> look out. That was a close one. Look how they fight. 
and the line to determine your position is not till around the corner. Look at that wiggle Man. for Hildebrand. That was, was a good catch. He was come. They were coming at him from all sides. <laughs> Wow, that was a great save by JR. Almost gets into the back of DeMarco. Hildebrand will be in seventh position here on the restart. It's Graham Rahal right behind JR. And there is Elio Castro Nevis, who, because of the pit stop, has dropped back to 19, 19th position. Back with more in just a moment to Iowa Speedway and the Indy 250 presented by Pioneer. Welcome back to Iowa Speedway. Dario Franchitti is our leader under caution. Lap 102 for the Will Power incident. I'm back at the infield care center. Will Power is inside. We will get an update on him coming up in just a few moments, hopefully. Three other drivers involved in crashes. They have all been checked, cleared, and released. They're all okay. That's Mike Conway, Anna Beatrice, and also James Jakes. Bob? All right, thank you, Kevin. We did see, of course, uh, will walk to the safety car so hopefully you're going to get a good report on him when uh, when it, it is available all right robin what's up well bobby uh, mike rogers got the right rear chart tire changed and he put his hands up and john sazonicus thought he was signaling he had a problem so they lost three spots when they got him back out but everything's fine now okay that of course a report on oriel Serbia, who is now back to 11th spot now let's go down to Robbie Floyd with a report on Graham uh, Ray Hall. Graham Ray Hall in the 38th in the A spot, but we eavesdropped, eavesdropped a little bit on his radio just a moment ago. Yeah, for the restart, we'll just do like Milwaukee, you know, just stay on the gearbox. You see him taking off. You see Dixon take off. You just go. Don't even wait for him to call green. You just go. Yep, copy. <laughs> and Graham also talked about finding a better line out there. And just before they came in for this last caution, they said, run the shortest distance around this racetrack. Race track. And right now, he's in eighth spot after starting 20th. And one other thing we should mention, Elio Castroneves, I mentioned he's back in 18th position, but he is back on the lead lap. So you're right, Dan. Don't count him out. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you can never count a Penske car out. And Elio Castro Neves, he, he will never give up. He had a great car early on in the race. And I would expect him. He's got plenty of laps to get back to the front. I would expect him to get there, I have to be honest. You know, they just told him, bad news, Elio, your P18. Good news? It's not even halfway yet. <laughs> well, well, the great news is yeah. you're on the lead lap. <laughs> I mean, that that really worked to his advantage. And that happened because everyone ahead of him pitted, and he got the waiver out. We are close to the halfway point. We're at uh, lap 105 now. Dario Franchitti has now led more than 500 laps this season. The closest driver to him, Will Power, who going into tonight's race had led 225. So Dario will continue to add to that number. Now, Bob, we've had enough pit stops now that people who had bad cars will start having better cars. So the complexion of the race is going to change because those who are in trouble would have chance to get it fixed. And I think the cooler conditions are going to close the field up. You get more downforce, it makes the car easier to drive. And uh, you, can, you can see here a um, little bit of uh, movement as they, as they line up. Now what you're talking about, Dan, was J.R. Hildebrand. As they're weaving, people jam on the brakes and then accelerate. And whoop. Yeah, that <laughs> was... Look out. That was, uh, he didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they line up two by two here as we get set to resume the competition. Guys, and I think this is going to get good this time. I really do. Once again, it's Franchini flanked by Tony Kanan, then Sato in the second row with Marco Andretti, Briscoe and Dixon in the third row. Here they come to the restart as the fans are on their feet, waving their green flags, and indeed it is green. And again, Dario gets a great jump. He's in the in the comfortable position. He's not having to fight with anybody. Kanan's on the outside oh, of Sato. Sato. Yeah, Sato is showing some muscle here. He takes second. Now his confidence is going to be gaining because remember he had not put any any laps on that car after being repaired. Now his confidence will be back. And Kanan said he had nothing for Dario. Sato thinks just the opposite. Yeah. He's going. <laughs> He's going. 
Tony's car's obviously working pretty well, can run pretty close. You see him just get out of the power a little bit, the car pushing in that dirty air. Over that bump, yeah. you, you hear him lift out the power. It often, often the car bottoms a little bit on the first few laps until the tire temperatures get up and just lift that ride height a little. Once that happens, then you're able to drive over that bump flat out. While we're on board with Tony Kanaan in third, we'll tell you that Scott Dixon has moved up to fifth. He started 23rd. And Jan indicated during uh, the book, just before we, we started the race, that this is the worst that Scott Dixon has ever started. Ties for the worst he ever started. But he won the race that he started 23rd in Nazareth a decade ago. His very first IndyCar win. Yep. Dixon is having some bottoming out issues, he said, which is making the car loose. They have told them the next time he comes in, they're going to adjust the tire pressures to see if that helps. You see Dixon right in front of rookie J.R. Hildebrand. And what you do when you raise the tire pressure is you, in effect, raise the ride height of the race car. That means he'll be able to get over the bump without the bottoming. Good run for Scott Dixon so far in this race. And you know what? Sorry, Bob, I keep... That's okay. What, 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 Dixon, what Dixon is very good at, he's very good at analyzing what his car does. And it's early on in the race. He'll be making changes to make it good for the end. And you see Marco on the outside oh, of Tony Kanaan. Yeah. Just about to take third. The battle for third is between Kanaan on the low side and Marco Andretti. Now, don't forget about their off-season war of words where Marco was saying... Yellow, oh. yellow, yellow. Sebastian Saavedra is in the safer barrier just past the halfway point. And Jan, like you said, the yellows breed yellows, yeah. and this is this is just the track for that. Only been 20 laps since they pitted, so we'll have the same scenario, 50-50, some will, some won't. Typically, it'll be the opposite of what I say. You're, you're the man <laughs> at that. That's why I drive the race car, because uh, I, I definitely get that wrong every time. <laughs> The Homatro safety team rushes to the driver, Sebastian Saavedra, Colombian driver. And another big hit here at Iowa Speedway. Listen. Uh, oh, same place. Man, man. Same place. Yep. And this track will bite you. And, uh, you know, again, he hit at a bad angle with the rear of the car first. And, you know, that's that's the last mm. possible place you, you want to hit. If you... But we'll look at a replay first. Oh, you can see all the sparks. Was that enough sparks to where something could have broken? Because yeah, yeah, there was a lot of sparks. Yeah, and I think, I think you might be right. I think something may have broke. We'll back it up to the... If there was sparks before it goes sideways and it continues to spark, yeah. that often is an indicator that something's broken. That's a lot. It's, it's, yeah, that's a close one. Now you may notice by the position, the way that they're tending to him in the car. Looking ahead to... Oh, that's, that's a difficult one yeah, to I'm say wondering, from here. I'm wondering if the right rear suspension may have, may have given way. That was an awful lot of sparks. And you may have noticed the positions that they've gone into. If you watch the pre-race show, what they're doing is stabilizing his neck, meaning that there may be, if he has any sort of complaint of neck pain, they'll go through that procedure that we got demonstrated through the Professor B that Ed Carpenter showed for us. So that is exactly the procedure they're going through right now. And, and this year on the Homacho safety team, they do a fantastic job. As, as drivers, you want to know you've got people surrounding that you that, that care and, and are very competent and do a great job. And they're there sometimes before the car even stops. We, we, we as drivers know these guys on a personal level and appreciate everything they do. This racetrack does not have a concrete wall. It is the first racetrack in the country to not have a, a, a concrete wall, but instead a safer barrier all the way around, even on the straightaways. And that is an also an important factor. Bob, and I gotta say, this racetrack needs it. Yeah, you know, it's, exactly. It's a challenging racetrack. Now, Bob was talking about this being a safer barrier. Watch the wall itself. Yeah. You can just see, see yeah. how much of the G-force is reduced because of that. But still, that is a huge hit, which is why you're seeing Dr. Olinger and his crew 
Dr. Terry Trammell on yep. the left. They have the fill-up suits, and then Homacho safety team are those that actually perform the rescue. And what's great about that war is it really absorbs some of the impact. Can you imagine if that was that was concrete? That could have been, uh, you know, yeah. a, a very intense accident. Hey, Dan Weldon, did you ever hit a wall that was all concrete? Because I think Jan broke his pelvis hitting a real wall in Michigan once. Yeah, I've hit a few walls in my time. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> and uh, I think, as some people tell me, they knock some sense into me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a huge safety improvement, and it definitely reduces the impact. And uh, the series should be commended for uh, and and the tracks for putting these safer barriers or safer walls, you know, at the tracks that we race at. Sebastian Saavedra remains in the car. The doctor's being very careful. Yes, but they're letting him, you see, they're letting him move his head now. Yeah. So that we saw when Ed Carpenter, actually when we interviewed Ed Carpenter, they were so trained to holding his neck that they didn't let him go. He could barely, yeah, right. barely answer my question. But anytime they allow you to move your neck, that is a fantastic sign. Dr. Terry Trammell is back to you, one of the best-known orthopedic doctors and surgeons in the country, or in the world for that matter, in blue. He was a doctor that took off his belt when Alex Zanardi had his horrible crash and really saved his life. And you can see Sebastian is very shaken up. Yeah. I mean. The, these indie cars, when we hit the, at the speeds we do, you know, it really takes your breath away. There's that adrenaline initially, and then, you know, when you get to think about it, it can be incredibly painful. Remember, this is the same guy who last year won the race in Indy Lights, yep. and has been struggling in the indie car, and this is not what he was hoping for. And it's always very difficult when you're in a one-car team. You have, he's inexperienced, he doesn't have, you know, the information from an experienced second second guy or girl in that team, and, and it makes it very, very hard to learn. The competition level in this series right now is as intense as it's ever been. Well, beginning to clean up the debris and vehicles moving away from the scene of our latest crash. Out of turn number two in the back stretch, Sebastian Saavedra having a hard hit. And guys, while we're looking, we can see Dario there, Takuma Sato in second, and Kanan in third. I gotta say, I love the way Takuma Sato's attacking the race. Yeah. He is really going for it. It's great to see, you know, on, on those initial laps, I don't know if, you, if you've noticed it, but that car is sliding a little bit on the rear end. He, he's really going for it. KB Racing Technology, second, third, and 15th, Lindy. Yeah, and there's been a lot of radio chatter between TK talking about Takuma Sato. Listen to this. He's dropping me off every time. Think, I'm not going to pass him. Tell him to take care of me. This is the second time. 10 4 TK, I just relayed the information to Jimmy and told him to knock it off. <laughs> it's one more, and he's going to learn a lesson that he will never forget. Oh. <laughs> That's some great team chemistry right there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin is with Will Power. Well, good to see you come out of the medical center. First, are you okay? That was a big hit. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, it's rung my bell a bit then. That hurt. Um, probably shouldn't have been out there with a damaged car, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, shit, man, that's not good. I heard you guys talking before. It went green the last time. You wanted to come back in and try to fix things again. What happened? I was trying to tell him that it needs to be fixed, and uh, I was trying to say we should just go under and close it anyway. All right, here we're seeing what happened on pit row with Charlie Kimball. Tell us your perspective and what you were hearing. Um, yeah, I mean, they just sent me out, and he came across my bow, and that was that. Bent the steering and broke the front wing. Yeah, and then that's what I guess what caused the accident. I mean, I had to put so much lock in to turn the car, and um, then it caught me out. And, uh, once again, we screwed ourselves in the pits like we always do. We've just got to stop that. We've got a couple of weeks off before Toronto. Are you going to need to get cleared again before you can get back in the race car? I don't think so. Uh, I think I'm cleared now, so uh, I didn't really have a concussion or anything. Um, just a little bit. Oof, got a bit of a headache. Sorry, Will. Power out of the race tonight. Lindy? I mean, we heard the radio communication between Sato and TK about blocking. What have you said to Sato? Uh, well, it wasn't really blocking. I think TK's uh, smart enough to, you know, it's halfway through that he's just trying to 
work with Takuma and ride around, maybe save a little fuel. But I think uh, Takuma was taking some air off and making it difficult. I think he shot up about a three and four. And uh, Takuma, you know, he apologized. And we talked to Takuma to, you know, give him a little more space for some clean air. And you had just told him to save fuel behind Dario. You could stay green for a while. Then it goes yellow. Seems every time you say something, it changes. Are all these cautions making it tricky? Well, it seems like we're, uh, we're in the window now to make it on one stop if we go all the way out to 170. But if another yellow comes, you know, 150, 160, you know, then we're all going to be scrambling to get to make it there, counting on some yellow. But certainly also when you're out front, uh, you burn more fuel. So Dario's a little bit of a disadvantage when he's out front. So we're trying to just try to hold court right now. Still a lot of race to go. And uh, as you see, the race changes quite often. But I'm, I'm proud of Takuma and Tony and the whole team. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can we can get a trophy for the shop here. And Bob, we are now at the halfway point. Yep, 125 complete, 125 to go. A great nighttime shot above Iowa Speedway. Dario Franchitti leads to Kumasato here in Iowa. Less than a lap away from the restart of the Iowa Corn Indy 250 presented by Pioneer. Dario Franchitti flanked by Takuma Sato. Then Kanan and Marco Andretti in row number two. Here they come for the restart. Green, green, green. And we're green once again. And the 2KB cars are side by side, guys. What's going to happen? We know that there's a little bit of friction there. Sato seemed comfortable on the, on the outside and, and clears Tony. Is he going to attack Dario? I think he is. Now we'll see if Marco has anything for TK. Marco moves to the high side of Kanan. Off of the fourth corner, Kanan holds off the challenge for the moment. And Marco has some momentum. Yeah, high, high side Marco. He loves that outside. Couldn't, couldn't get alongside Tony, but on these restarts, he is fantastic getting up to speed quickly. Serbia and Patrick. And here's Alex Tagliani. Uh, he has been he has been strong today. Yep. Moved up to seventh, and he's challenging Scott Dixon on the outside right now. Tagliani was very brave on that restart. They were actually three wide. He was all the way up against the wall. He stays up there and is trying to get the better of Dixon. Battle for sixth position. Boy, to, uh, Tags had a terrible car at Milwaukee last weekend, but it's it's working for him tonight. And he should just about clear Scott. Yep. Yes, he did. And, and, and Scott's going to be under pressure from Oriel on that outside line. Danica Patrick also sneaking up to join that four-car battle. Here comes Serbia, just like he said. And see the problem, guys, when you get pinned on that inside, it just, you, you can't carry the momentum. So uh, Scott's really going to have to you know, make his car work. He'll be using that weight jacker to, to make the car rotate for him and, and not have any push so he doesn't have to get out of the power. Let's talk about Alex Tagliani. You talk about it, it looked like he had a good car. When I was talking to his strategist, Rob Edwards, during that last yellow, he said they're not having to chase the car. And as we look at Tags on the outside, Jarrah Hildebrand started on the outside of him earlier, and his spotter said, hey, you see that Dixon is loose in one and two. It's a good thing we're on the outside. Well, Tags is now on the outside, and he's loving it, but they're not chasing that car. Just minor adjustments, a little push here, then a little understeer, a little oversteer, but they're not really chasing. They're just fine tweaks, and Rob Edwards is really happy with the 77 Bauer and Wilkins car. Tagliani up to six, just ahead of him. Here we are, the National Guard car driven by J.R. Hildebrand. And Seven he, by three, working that high line. He really likes that outside groove. As I say that, he's kind of moved to the inside, but back on that outside, he seems to be able to carry a lot of momentum through the corners, and, you know, he's, gonna, he's wanting to work to the front. And if you can run high for a lot of the race, you don't actually wear your tires as much because you actually have a larger radius, so it helps you later in the stint. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great point, Jan, and you can see Tagliani, he, he's not giving up. He's no. really working to, to get by those cars. Now Servia is pushing on Dixon. Here he comes to the inside. Servia low, Dixon high into corners one and two. The battle for seventh. Tagliani just set the fastest lap of the race with an 18.096 second lap. He's on his overtake assist as well. Remember, they have that push to pass feature as well. He's using that. Tagliani really wants to keep that momentum going and close this gap. There you see Hildebrand closing up on Marco a little bit. And he's on overtake as well. So Hildebrand's going after him. 
You know, the intensity of this race, it's that little ball ring. People are on their overtakes. There's people on your outside, people on your inside. It's 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 just a fantastic racetrack and promotes a really good race. And look at Kanan. Wow, look at the lead. Kanan's looking to try and get back by Sato. Oh, and it's cost him a spot, potentially. Marco's on the inside of him. Oh, oh there man. you go. So close in turn one, and Marco gets the spot. Antonio will definitely be complaining about that. Marco really committed to uh, to the inside and uh, said to Tony, hey, I, I'm not giving you any room, I'm nope. coming through. They were both on the overtakes. They said, take that former teammate. <laughs> oh, oh and, and here comes Hildebrand to the oh, inside. Nearly touched wheels there as Hildebrand came up. <sighs> My palms are sweating again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh, JR's had, had to left back big off. time. And guys, you saw exactly what happened there. Tony crossed JR's bow, and it made his car push on up. And hopefully for him, he uh, won't lose an, uh, the momentum where another car gets in from behind. This is the battle for 10 spot. Ryan Briscoe on board, looking back to JR Hinchcliffe. And that's unbelievable. Ryan Briscoe is the lead Penske car in 10th place, and he's being attacked by Hinchcliffe. Castro Neves is now 16th, and um, you know Hinchcliffe is uh, he's not giving up. He's, no. he's he's trying hard. It's good to see guys like James Hinchcliffe and J.R. Hildebrand having great races on this kind of a racetrack. And I think James Hinchcliffe is doing a fantastic job as a rookie. He's in a blessed position. He's got Oriol Servia, great teammate, a wealth of experience. You know, feels very comfortable in that environment, and that and that's really helping James. Join our iZone's iZod Speed Zone here on board with now Marco Andretti. <laughs> Once again, really close between Whoa. Hildebrand and Kanan. And that really took the air off of Hildebrand. Guys, Tony's definitely not giving Hildebrand much no, room. There's he no really, doubt about he it. He really squeezed him down on that yellow line. There's your first three, and look how close they are. Marco's still working that yeah. high line. Dario hasn't been able to break away as much as I thought, but you know, seems pretty comfortable up the front. Here, Here comes, comes Marco. Marco. Yep. Outside. Yeah, he's Outside. good in the middle of this corner. Outside. Still there. They're telling Sato <laughs> that he's there. Fans are loving it. Now let's try the inside. Oh, great move. Whoa! Great move. Great commitment wow. from Marco. Fantastic. He got by Tony in a very aggressive way, but clean. And he did the same to Sato. And Sato was great to give him room. And now we focus on Serbia and, and Tagliani for sixth place. And so Serbia now is going low. Tagliani's been running high for a while. Serbia now has got some clean air. See if he can catch the group ahead. Tagliani was running such a high line in turns one and two. That's a lot of extra track distance he's covered, and Scott's getting on the inside of him right now. So Serbia's left this group. They fight amongst themselves. Danica, oh, she had to lift, and Briscoe goes to the high side. And that was great opportunistic driving from Briscoe. Saw that, and, that, and that's a guy that kind of read that situation fantastically. Really, really good driving there from Ryan Briscoe. Briscoe moves up to ninth, dropping Danica back to 10th. Remember, she started on the outside of the front row. Back up front, about a four car length advantage for Dario Franchitti over a charging Marco Andretti. And the battle for third now between the teammates. Guys, that's getting close. Look at Marco, though. Really Marco's close. got to run. He's got and a he's good. And he's going to the inside. And Whoa, he's... for the lead. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he, he downshifted, and uh, can he complete it? 
I think he's got position. Man, this is good stuff, huh? This is fantastic racing. It's great for Andretti Autosport. They're leading now, and it's great for Marco. It, it, this is the natural, talented Marco that, that I expect to see weekend in, weekend out. Marco Andretti's best finish this year was at Barber in the second race of the season. He finished fourth. Now watch Dario once again make a charge on Marco. Guys, and I've got to tell you, Dario Franchitti is going to know that Will Power's out of the race. He's going to know that Marco's desperate to win, and that's something that he's going to take into consideration. Yep. Yeah, Good he point. won't take the same level of risk that he might otherwise, but right now he's he's not letting him get away. <laughs> he's not letting him get away, but, but he knows. Marco's a very, very clean race car driver. He's... He's desperate to win, though. Yeah, so is yeah. Andretti Autosport. Michael actually talks on Marco's radio, and so uh, they're going to be uh, excited. Uh, here he comes. Look at Dario. Yeah, here he comes to the inside, and he's going to get the lead back. Franchini goes back to the lead on lap 161. Hey, and who said Dario is not hungry for wins? This is an experienced <laughs> guy, great motivation, doing a fantastic job. Really, really great to see. But you know what's great? They're racing each other clean. These two are probably racing each other cleaner than the two teammates behind them, Tony yeah. Kanan and Takuma Sato. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Well, it's perhaps the best oval racing we have seen this year. Texas was as usual good, but so is it here at Iowa tonight. It's Franchini back in front of Andretti, Sato, Kanan, and Hildebrand in the top five. The eyes on IndyCar Series in action here at Iowa Speedway, and Dario Franchini is the leader. He has led 50% of the laps this year, 557 out of 1155, and Boy, getting around some of the slower traffic is now a challenge for Tony Kanaan. That is Alex Lloyd on his right. Guys, this is where it's going to get really interesting as you start to get through lapped cars. There's Hildebrand on the inside of Lloyd. And Robbie Floyd eavesdropped on some conversation with J.R. Oh, Hildebrand. Wow! Yeah, some close calls with J.R. Hildebrand. Don't have to worry about it that time. The number four working his way up again, started in fourth. He has a very fast race car, had a hard time getting by Tony Kanaan, but when you have Poncho Carter making the calls, he gives you the exact way to get by. Next time you get to him like that, you're making a run, make, make him think you're going high. Maybe just go high, then take him to turn three. Go. It's that simple, guys. Just take him in turn three. <laughs> And Pancho Carter is uh, no stranger to IndyCar racing. Now, look at uh, EJ Viso there in the 59 as, as Kanan went around. We saw that on board from J.R. Hildebrand. Yeah. That was a big moment for EJ Viso. You talk about how the two KV cars are so quick. He's in his backup car. Remember, he had a crash in Milwaukee. He couldn't get back to his primary. He says that's the reason why he's so much off the pace this weekend. Mm. He definitely got loose as Tony crossed his bow. And you can just see with, with one car what an effect that makes to, uh, to the handling characteristics of the race car. You can see Marco keeping that pressure on. I've been really, really impressed with him here. And EJ Viso will come in for a pit stop on lap number 178. When you stop now, the window is open, as we say, that he can make it to the end on fuel. If you're leaders, you want to stay out as long as you possibly can in case you catch a yellow. But if you were to pit now, it'll be your last stop. And you're right, Dan. Marco is not letting Dario get out of his sights. The advantage is by time, two tenths make that three tenths of a second. But it's a matter of car lengths. And a lot of people give Marco a hard time, but when you race against him, you can really see his true natural talent. You know, when, it, when he races in the damp and you're on slicks, there's a guy that comes to the front. I remember back in St. Pete a couple of years ago, the race was damp, we all started on slicks, and he was phenomenal. But you can see he's closed up again, and yep. he, he, he's desperate. He yep. is, he... Oh, here he comes. He's looking on the inside. He's looking at Dario's oh, he giving him room. Yeah. He had to lift it. That was nice. Yeah. It's so close around here. Oh, it's yeah. unbelievable. 
Takuma Sato is in, Robbie. And Takuma Sato, I asked her, are they making any changes? Said no changes to him right now, making his way in. Again, he's a first time pole sitter from Japan. A lot of pressures on this guy. Come from the Formula One series. He's gonna throw on, he looks like a scuff set of Firestone Firehawks filled up with Sunoco Ethanol and push him out with a fair start for Takuma Sato. Alex Tagliani comes in as well, and they've really not been chasing that car, the number 77. I think he's been happy with it throughout much of the day. Oh, and Vitor Mira has got major sparks. He's got a problem if this brings out a caution. Wow, we have a move for the lead. Slower car up ahead. That's, that's Viso, who just came out of the pits. Oh, this is going to get close. This is going to get close. <laughs> oh, Marco just pushes up. Dario is definitely, he's very aggressive though. When, when you consider that Will Power's out of out of the race, he's still pushing the envelope. What's great is he knows, oh, and he's pit stop, pitting, pitting. Yep. And Marco's falling, oh, here we go. The two leaders right together, and he almost gets into the back of them. <laughs> Guys, and in and out laps are gonna become really important right now, really important. 60 mile an hour speed limit down pit lane. Hey, reset your fuel, your... Uh, oh! oh and Sato, Sato is in the wall. So anyone who hasn't pitted is going to get a huge advantage. Actually, these guys are too because they're in the Hi, pits buddy. and this counts. Now this we'll see. All right, buddy. Marco Andretti, they were thinking about putting a half turn of wing. They said no changes to that. So he's going to take off again a full set of Sudoku Ethanol and Lenny Thaxton. Same with Dario Andretti. No changes. He is pulling out now this race on oh, got him. And Marco Andretti gets him. Wow. Good job, boys. Good and job. they're having problems with the fuel with uh, with Serbia, Kevin. He's been in here for at least 30 seconds, and they couldn't get it engaged, couldn't get the fuel in. Now it's away. Oriol Serbia is running fifth, and now the car is about to die. It's just barely running. They're pushing it, oh. and now it's dead. So a chance at a top five goes away for Oriol Serbia. Was having a great run. J.R. Hildebrand is the leader, but he has not pitted. Right, so because the leaders had already turned on the pit road before the caution lights came on, that's a new rule for this year, you actually get the, the credit for a caution earlier than last year. They haven't lost the lap. Thankfully, they got Serbia going again here. And thankfully, Takuma Sato is walking to the Phillips emergency car after his incident, and here is what happened. Right of your screen, oh, really just broke high. loose once again. Yeah. That turn, that, the exit of turn two, that's, yeah, that's biting, been... biting everybody, but such a shame for KV Racing Technology. You know, their cars have been fast these last couple of races, and man, oh man, happened to Tony Kanaan, um, I think two, two years consecutively. Three, actually. Yeah, three. Yep. Yep. So now what happens, Bob, is anyone who hasn't stopped yet, like J.R. Hildebrand, has to come in and they lose all their track position. So it was just a fantastic gift for Marco Andretti, Dario Franchitti, and the others who happen to already be on pit lane. Robbie? Three, two. Well, the number four of J.R. Hildebrand, they had problems early, corrected a big push early in the race, no problems now. They started on the outside of row two, trying to get a good, strong start and back out. Again, John Barnes was angry earlier when Brian Briscoe passed on the outside. Now everybody's going to be trying to pass J.R. Hildebrand. And one just did, and that was Ryan Briscoe who had a great stop. Ryan Briscoe really deserves a lap to go, go his way. He's had a couple of unlucky breaks this season, and uh, he'll want to make the most of this. And uh, I'm going to go down to Kevin. Great stop for Ryan Briscoe and the 16. They're looking for their first win of the season. Now a quick pit stop gives them an opportunity and also a fortuitous caution helps. Got a feel for Oreo Serbia as we look at his teammate, J.R. Hildebrand. He, this is, it's the pit stops. You know, they, they had a couple problems in Milwaukee. You know, we've had one here and now the fuel not flowing. It's like, oh man, we, we've got a fast car. It's, it's a, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a shame. When you're on the lead lap, though, round here, anything can happen. We've seen cautions, breeding cautions, and I expect the same. It's the racing has been so intense. We, uh, we've, 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 we've got about 60 laps to go. So, uh, you know, people are going to stop giving uh, the room that they're giving. But I've got to tell you, there's not much giving out there right now. So <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. We have had four leaders of this race so far. 
Marco Andretti had the lead on the racetrack, and he also won the race off pit road to put him in front of Dario Franchitti and the others, including Canon Briscoe and Hildebrand. 189 laps completed. We're under caution because of an incident involving the pole sitter for this race, Takuma Sato. We'll take a break and be right back. Welcome back to the Iowa Corn Indy 250. We're on lap 192 of 250. Marco Andretti, the number 26 Andretti and Autosport Honda in the lead right now. And with strategist Michael Andretti, this car has been really good from the get-go. What have you talked or what have you said to Marco? Not much, you know, he's just uh, real happy with the car and uh, you know, now it'll be interesting to see if he has the speed to stay up front. You know, he had a really good car to get up to the front, so uh, you know, hopefully uh, the Venom car will uh, get us there. Driving fast is one thing, but you also won it in the pits getting out ahead of Dario that time. That was huge. The Venom guys did a great job with the pit stop. That's, you know, getting out first is here is big here because he'll be able to get the jump at the start. Lindy Thaxton. With Chip Ganassi watching Marco Andretti and your own driver, what do you think you have for Marco out there? Well, you know, there's about you know, 55 to go or something yet, so plenty of race for us to give him a run. I mean, we had a pretty good car there. I'll give him credit. That last, that last segment there, his car was really good. So uh, we'll see if we have some for him. And I'm sure you noticed Will Power out of that race. Does that take a little pressure off for championship? Well, you know, we'd rather be racing him. I mean, I, you know, we don't want to see anybody crash. So, um, you know, uh, we hope, I hope he's okay, and, uh, you know, we'll see him next week, I'm sure. Chip, we'll let you get back to your strategy there. Bob? That's Chip Ganassi, and Jan, there have been many highlights of this race in the first 194 laps. There have, Bob. It's been a great night of racing right from the get-go. Takuma Sato gets on the throttle, leaves Danica Patrick behind, and brings Tony Kanaan with him. And it was just the beginning of a night full of action, side-by-side -side racing, especially amongst those teammates. Lap number seven, this is when Dario Franchitti shows his muscle going to the inside of Takuma Sato. And man, he has been strong all night long. Unfortunately, Takuma Sato runs into trouble later on. The first person who did run into trouble, that was James Jakes on lap number 24. And that turned out to be the trouble spot that we saw a lot of people get into. Thankfully, Jakes was okay. A lap 27, this was when Will Power left. He was sent and he was sent in the path of Charlie Kimball. Sure, Charlie wasn't exactly where he needed to be, but unfortunately, Will Power's team sent him when they should not have. Now, lap 45, two cars getting together. Anna Beatrice, Mike Conway, shrapnel flying everywhere. Vitor, Mira's car damaged, many others with punctures and damage. They got that all cleaned up. And lap number 78, unfortunately, maybe it was one of those shards that cut down the tire for Elio Castro Neves. He lost a lap and a half but now he has it back and has a shot. Lap 90, of course, was Will Power's big accident. He said, you know, maybe we shouldn't have been out there pushing so hard with a damaged car, rung his bell. Certainly a very heavy hit for Power. And 114, Sebastian Saavedra, equally as hard, certainly, as Will Power. At first, they tended to him as though he had neck pain. That brings us to lap 185 to Kumasato. This is a caution that we're under now, and it was in some way for his teammate and others. It helped them on pit road. Thankfully, Sato's okay. Marco Andretti is the leader. He has led 12 of the 195 laps. We've had five caution periods for 69 laps. Four leaders, five lead changes, and the average speed on this seven-eighths of a mile racetrack is 111 miles an hour. And we got one more to go at the line, and we'll get back to racing. Ryan hunter Ray is in 12th position, and Lindy has some news. Yeah, a little bit of almost entertainment type news here. This is Ryan hunter Ray's last race before he's a married man. Next weekend, he marries Becky Gordon. They met in Long Beach. They were engaged in Long Beach. So as soon as this race is over, uh, he's got a little bit of a different kind of stress going on, I guess. <laughs> That, of course, is Robbie Gordon's sister as they line up two abreast for the restart. Here is Marco Andretti pulling ahead of Franchitti. There is no start. Uh, pulling ahead a little early. <laughs> he, was, he was excited. He yeah. wants to hold on to that lead. He definitely wants to hold on to that lead. I think he knows that, you know, there's uh, a 50, 51 laps left. If Dario gets in front, he's going to be difficult to get by. Well, we'll try it again here. They come down the back stretch.
stay on board with Marco Andretti as we look over to Dario Franchitti. And once again, he jumps out oh, into he's on it pretty early. early. Green, green, green. Uh, but he we got away with it that time. Yep. And Kanan's yeah. inside Dario. It's tight. It's tight. And oh, Serbia's right. up there, too. Serbia going around the outside. Three wide on this racetrack. The banking is progressive from 12 to 14 degrees, allowing this side-by-side -side competition. And Serbia couldn't hold it. Ended up losing the spot. He, he's actually a lap down. So you've got Briscoe. Now he's, he's, he's attacking Dario. He would be because of all that time he spent on pit lane. Yep. So he's got to try to get to the front to get away by. That's why he's being so aggressive, because he's got to get to the front in case there's a caution. And he's just dived inside uh, Ryan Briscoe there, and you've got Scott Dixon and J.R. Hildebrand racing pretty hard behind them. And J.R. Oh. JR up the inside into turn one. Way down to the inside on the straightaway. He takes the inside light around the corner with Dixon beside him, but Dixon holds off the challenge momentarily. But JR's got a good run going as up front we have Marco Andretti and now Tony oh, Kanon and Kanon will make a move to the inside. And there's wow. no love lost between these two, but Tony takes it. And Tony uh, said earlier on in the race he had nothing for Dario. He looks like he's got something now. <laughs> for Marco anyway. <laughs> 48 laps to go and Tony Kanon is in the lead. Wow. That last pit stop, they made the right adjustment for Tony Kanon. He's probably thankful that his te teammates are okay, but out of the race. They were having some problems racing each other. Now he could just focus on himself, focus on leading, and um, you know these three are going to duke it out. This is the third consecutive race that Tony Kanaan has led this year. He led from the pole in the second Texas twin race, and he led, of course, last week in Milwaukee for 33 laps before he crashed. And I can promise you one thing about Tony. He'll remember how aggressively Marco passed him. He won't forget that. So that's oh, and Mercario just interest. got loose. Wow, he really shot up toward the outside wall. Now Marco will look to the outside. And it turns one and two. Great racing. Three cars here. First, second, and third. And Dario now looks to the inside of Marco. Ryan Briscoe is now starting to close in on the top three as Marco looks to the high side. So now a Penske car in fourth and closing. Marco can't quite get alongside Tony enough to pin him down on the low line. That means that Tony can dictate where he wants to be on the racetrack. And then Marco looking inside. I think he's going to pull this off. Yes, he does. Great, great that? move by Marco. Marco goes back to the lead. This is the first race that Marco has led this year. He led six races last year. Marco definitely has a great race car in traffic. Is he quick enough out front? I'm just not sure about that yet, but right now he's holding off Tony. And back here we have a side-by-side -side battle between Ryan Briscoe in six and Scott Dixon in number nine. Dixon is fourth. And again, up front, we have a battle for the lead. Kanan trying to get it from Marco Andretti into turn number three. Whoa, nope, man. not this time. And Marco was nicer. He definitely gave Tony room. He could have he could have come across the bow, but that's allowed for Dario to sneak up the inside of Tony. Can he get it? Wow, and here comes Scott Dixon charging up on Franchitti. Oh, and Frank Kitty almost gets Again. in big trouble. And here it comes. He's going to get passed by Dixon. And, and a move for the lead at the same time. <laughs> oh, and Scott has passed yeah. Dario, too. Yeah. So don't count out Scott Dixon, who started back in 23rd position. Kanan now has the lead once again from Marco Andretti. And this is all happening at an average lap speed of about 177 miles an hour. How incredible is that? And this is the kind of racing that we see at Texas in some of the mile and a half racetracks, and it's happening on the 7 8 mile oval at Iowa. And you notice Tony has tightened up his line a little bit now. His car's obviously working well, but he's going to try and shorten that track distance, and that's going to make it a little bit harder for Tony. That Their lap times will probably increase a little bit because they're not covering that same distance as well. Five laps to go. 
Ryan's kind of calmed down a bit right yeah. now, but you're just waiting for Marco to <laughs> yeah. attack again. And you can see he's able to run close, and he's probably going to have a good run here. Tony blocking a little bit, or hugging the inside, I should say, right now. And we have another battle on the right side of your screen. Hinchcliffe and Patrick going for the eighth spot. Ryan Hunter Ray also going for that position. Marco keeps trying to get to the outside. His car's obviously working well, but, you know, Tony has really tightened up his line. Oh, Marco had to lift just a little bit. Canon maintains the advantage. The, lip, the laps are counting down. You won't miss a thing on versus non-stop. Kanan leading Andretti Dixon and Franchitti. Tony Kanan won last year's race here at Iowa Speedway, and he has the lead again, but he's being challenged by Marco Andretti. That is EJ Viso that they get around the slower car. And traffic could very definitely play a factor here in the closing laps. Oh, oh and there was contact. Touch. There was a touch. EJ Viso contact. It didn't hit anything, but there was definitely side to side contact for Viso. And I'm assuming that must have been with Briscoe. That creates a log jam and a battle for position back there. Briscoe, Hinchcliffe, Castro Nevis, Hunter Ray all back there in that area. Oh, it's because hit. Wow, it's because. X. Hildebrand. J.R. Hildebrand shot to the inside and tried to take them both. Mm. Wow, that was, could have been big. What a save for E.J. Yep. Visa. Yeah, that was a good save. Back up front, we see Marco Andretti. Mm. Looking high, looking low, unable to do anything right now with Tony Kanaan. Marco's working that high line, but he just can't draw alongside him enough, like I say, to pin Tony down. You see Tony as he goes up, he just moves up a little bit in one to make it more difficult for Marco. Tony's very, very sneaky. There's a couple of times he's crossed the bow of Marco's car and made Marco shoot up the track. <laughs> Now there's no love lost between these two. And oh, Marco the inside. Went, it's a great move. Wow, he, he, it. It. he surprised him. He's on the overtake. Oh, oh, almost locking wheels. And Marco's not going to give him any room. And I think he's going to be able to complete the pass. He's got the inside line and. And Marco's keeping him that, high. That was a great bit of driving by Marco Andretti. He just waited and waited and just attacked at the perfect moment. Meanwhile, Scott Dixon back there in third spot. Not too far behind it. Here oh. comes Kanan again to the inside. Oh, and why was Marco leaving the door open? I wanted to push him down the track. <laughs> but, you know, this is allowing Scott Dixon to catch up too. Tony's sister watching and praying for her brother. That's exactly what Scott, and Scott has not been, and Dario have not been able to keep up with these two. So seeing that space now, he's going to be able to have a, a cleaner run behind Tony, pick up that draft, and, and hopefully for Marco, he'll be able to see those two dice it out. But I don't think we're done with Tony just yet. Now, if I was Michael Andretti, I'd be watching this and saying, Marco, get down. Don't give Tony the inside. Make it difficult for him, because when he can get alongside you, you know, that's that's right. when you're going to lose the spot. But Marco may not be able to. This car may not want to stay down there. Only 15 laps to go at Iowa. Marco Andretti leading Tony Kanaan by two-tenths of a second, about five car lengths. Let's get a medical update on several drivers. Back to Kevin Lee. Bob, will start with Sebastian Saavedra. He is okay. He spent a little time because it was a heavy hit, and they wanted to check him out. The car was really good. He worked his way from last up to as high as about 12th, but he felt like something might have broke, so they'll check on that. Takuma Sato has been checked, cleared, and released. In fact, he's back out on pit road cheering on his teammate, Tony Kanaan. And Will Power has been determined to have a mild concussion, so he will need to be cleared before he can race at Toronto. That will be in two weeks. Once again, they pass by E.J. Viso. 
We got a glimpse there of a battle between James Hinchcliffe and Ryan Hunter Ray. That was for eight spot. Ryan Hunter Ray has it. Hinchcliffe had to get out of the throttle. Meanwhile, laps are really clicking down now as we'll have 11 to go at the line. Guys, you can see Marco leaves enough room for Tony to be able to kind of run flat out behind him, particularly in three and four. In turns one and two, Tony likes the high line, but it really enables him to get a run. Marco has nine overtakes left to Tony seven. This is going to kind of become a strategy. Honda have done a great job in, in spicing up the racing a little bit more, and this is going to spice it up. Tony's on close. the button. Tony's on the button. He's burned one more of them. And it's close between these two, and again, they've broken away from Scott Dixon. Oh, a good oh. run now by Kanan. Does he have room to the inside? Nope. Wow, and that has really oh, broken the momentum with Tony Kanaan. That may be the move of the race. Does he have enough time to regroup? Because here comes Dixon. And I hate to say this, I hate to say this. That was a little bit of payback, I think, Marco. You know, Tony, Tony chopped uh, across the bow, I should say, aggressively of Marco on a couple of occasions, and he probably remembered that. And that was, uh, that was maybe payback. And here's J.R. Hildebrand doing a great job in fourth. Closing up on Scott Dixon, and, and Scott is closing up on Marco right now. He has had a great uh, on race. Tony, sorry. Yeah. And you can just hear the intensity in the cockpit for Marco Andretti. He was screaming, how many laps it did? They said 10, and then when it got down to eight, they said, push to pass on every lap. And the second that Tony Kanaan got underneath him, he said, push to pass. And that may be the move. Like you said, guys, he could win his first race at Sonoma 2006. Wow, it's been a long time since Marco Andretti was in victory lane. And it's difficult for them to catch him now. Marco's constantly on the overtake. You can yep. see it gliding up. So, uh, you know, Watch it's, um, it's going to be difficult to for Tony to close this gap. Five laps to go at Iowa. And that's what you want to do. You want to save enough overtakes so you can use one, as Robbie Floyd had said, each and every lap. So there's no way that Kanan can respond. Guys, I'm excited for the finish. I'm excited for the post-race interviews, too. <laughs> There's going to be some fireworks. On board with Brisco. Ryan Briscoe. That's Franchitti up ahead. This is the battle for fifth spot. They're side by side. And you saw that Briscoe couldn't hold the car down and had to lift. He had a good run on Dario. Dario gave him room, but he just didn't have enough to be able to stay flat out. Not quite happy with the car to complete the maneuver. Marco Andretti on ovals this year, 13th at Milwaukee, sixth at the second Texas race, 13th in the first Texas race, and ninth at Indianapolis. Bob, remember the very first thing that we said is you need a good car at the end of the stint. Yep. Dario Franchini's been lightning fast, but right now it's all Marco Andretti. Missing Father's Day weekend by one weekend, but Marco may have one for his dad, a victory for his dad, Michael Andretti. Off the fourth corner, and here is the white flag shown for Marco Andretti. And for the last 249 laps, Marco Andretti has spent his time fighting the Bulls in the bull ring. But he has won the Trofeo, that's the trophy in Spanish, and he comes through as the winner of the Iowa Corn Indy 250, presented by Pioneer. Marco Andretti wins over Canaan, Dixon, Hildebrand, and Franchitti. How about that? <laughs> it's Marco's first win in 79 races. His one and only win was August of 2006 at Sonoma. His first win on an oval for an Andretti since Michael won at Motegi in 2000. At that time, Marco was 13 years old. That's fantastic for Marco. Drove a fantastic race, was aggressive when he needed to be, timed everything right, and uh, yeah, there's a boy with natural talent. That's a pretty good burnout right there. <laughs> good for him, good for him, and great for Andretti Autosport. Had a difficult Indianapolis. This is a great way to bounce back and create some momentum. Robbie. Michael, it's one thing to win as a car owner, but what does it feel like to win again as a father of that driver? It's, uh, I'm a little speechless, to be honest with you. I'm just so happy and proud of him. And, you know, the Benham guys did a great job. He did an awesome drive there in the end. He schooled Tony on, his, on that pass and uh, just really proud of him. I'm just proud of everybody here. And uh, it's been tough, but uh, we're back. You're shaking right now. When did you know you had the car to win this race? 
pretty early on, I felt like we had a shot if we could get up there with Dario. I really did, and uh, once we did, we were strong. I just didn't know how we'd be out front, and uh, we needed a long stint, and we got it there in the end, and that's that's what did it for us. A big positive sign for Andretti Autosport winning the race. Danica qualifying so well. Are we going to start seeing the turnaround for the ovals in your car? Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be back. Go celebrate with your boy. Thanks. It's the third win in five races here in Iowa for Andretti Autosport. They won in 07 with Dario in 2010 with Canaan and this year with Marco Andretti. He makes his way toward victory lane for the first time in almost five years. Well, guys, that was very, very entertaining, wasn't it? Fireworks. <laughs> yeah, really. I think the most difficult thing for Marco was finding victory lane. He seemed to not know where to go. <laughs> that was a definitive move that Michael was just talking about. An aggressive, almost just waited and waited and baited and then just shot to the inside. And once he had the inside, he could keep Tony high. And Tony's always a di very difficult person to pass. Very aggressive. You know, for the most part, very clean. But, uh, you know, that Marco, Marco made that one count. That's going to be a happy boy sitting inside that race car. I can, yes. I can tell you that much. And, uh, you know, deserving winner tonight. You know, it was, uh, it, was, it was a great, great race for him. I was reading a blog by Marco just this morning, him saying that they haven't been particularly good on ovals this year because they spent more time in the wind tunnel working with road course cars. But hey, they are back on ovals. <laughs> There's the hug. Thirty thousand people in the grandstands, and they seem to like the what they have seen tonight. And that's great to see a father and son celebrate yeah. like that. It's sure obviously is. very emotional for for both uh, Michael and Marco, and uh, you know the whole team. Lindy Thaxton is in the victory circle, waiting for Marco to get his helmet off and. Nice touch, Michael Conway coming in, congratulating Marco. Yep. You know, they're good friends. That's actually his old engineer congratulating him, but engineered me at uh, Andretti Green, Eddie Jones. Marco Andretti standing up to the cheers. It has been a long time since he has been in victory lane. And Marco, you said you needed a turning point bad. When did you realize that could be tonight? Never doubt these guys. Um, you know, we, uh, we're we down a little bit on, on the bigger ovals, but we know when it comes down to handling that we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be all right. But, uh, you know, I think these guys did a great job in the pitch. They got me the lead back. and. Uh, some good racing with TK. It was good fun, but uh, the Venom boys were on it tonight. I need to thank my sponsor, Venom. Um, you know, I, I love the, all those guys, the Dr. Pepper Snapple group, and uh, we're so blessed to have them, and here we are. They deserve it. Let's talk about that side-by-side -side pass for the lead. And, you know, TK is known for passing people. How did you fight him off? Um, well, I mean, you know, I, I made my car... Uh, you know, I, was, I had eyes in the back of my head, as he would say, and uh, I made it difficult on him, but uh, no mercy at this point. I need it. And we saw you struggling a little bit with debris on your tires, and you seemed even then confident that you could clear that and keep going in this race. Yeah, I mean, it was the same for everybody. I just thought, you know, at the time, maybe uh, try something, but I'm glad we stayed with the track position because that was uh, the name of the game tonight, just stay towards the front. So uh, I want to thank my teammates as well. It's a week after Father's Day, but still a pretty good gift for him, huh? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. A week after Father's Day, still a pretty good gift for him. Yeah, I didn't get him a card, so I guess this works. <laughs> okay, I think this makes up for it, Bob. <laughs> There's Tony Kennard coming in with a hug. He finished win, in second I spot. I wasn't mad because I said if, if it wasn't for the win, we were going to talk about it. <laughs> hey, good job, guys. Nice job. Good job. Wow, that was great. It's no wonder that Tony Kanan is such a fan favorite with that kind of an attitude. Well, Marco Andretti has won here at Iowa in one of the best races we've seen in a long time. He was able to do the donuts after the checkered flag. Michael Andretti, his father, wins also here at Iowa. 
Danica Patrick even comes in and gives Marco Andretti a hug for winning tonight. Danica ended up in 10th position, but Marco Andretti is the man of the night winning here at the Iowa Speedway. And Kevin is with the second place finisher. Well, you entertained us tonight. Uh, let's talk about the end of the race. You had a run at Marco there, and you decided better of it, I guess. Well, it was for the win. He was not, not going to let it go. He had a great race, so... <laughs> I told him if it wasn't for the win, we were going to talk about it. So, uh, you know, all fair. Fair enough. Uh, if I was in his position, I would have done the same. And uh, it was a great battle, a fun race. I hope the, fun, the fans enjoyed it at home because uh, it, was, it was crazy at the end. I loved it. You take another jump up in the championship, up to fourth. Maybe more importantly is you guys are pretty hooked up right now. Not bad for an old man that got a deal five days before the first race. So now we are... We're building a good team and, uh, you know, I'm proud of the guys, proud of KV and Geico and all the sponsors. They put all the effort together to make me run and uh, the best thank you that I can give it to them is it's what I'm doing right now. You guys like this race. Uh, we certainly like it as uh, as fans and observers. What about as a driver? Kevin, I love it. Uh, how can you not love it? It's a great race, sold out. The fans are awesome. So uh, it's a perfect place to come race. A runner-up for Tony Kanaan. Congratulations. Let's check in with Robbie. Well, Scott Dixon finished in third. You started in 23rd. I mean, Texas, the last time we saw you on versus, you're having to come through the pack way too much, Scott. Yeah, and uh, I think did TK finally start talking there. He was, he was going on a bit. Um, but, no, you know, it was, a, it was a great night for us. You know, it's uh, definitely, it felt like a win. You know, the car wasn't that great. Uh, the, the guys in the pits did a hell of a job. You know, big credit to, to the target team. And, obviously, a good point tonight uh, for Dario and myself. But, yeah, it was crazy back there, especially early on. But uh, some good racing, close racing towards the end. Yeah, you talked about how spooky it was to me just a moment ago. Really loose. Yeah, it was really loose, especially through one and two. Three and four, I was, I was fine most of the night. But, uh, you know, the hard part is when you get in underneath somebody, you know, you don't want to wreck a whole bunch of cars out there. So uh, you had to be a little bit cautious. But, you know, good job to Marco, man. Uh, he drove a hell of a race. They had a, a great car. It's, uh, it's you know, it's awesome for Andretti uh, Autosport and huge credit to him. Let's reflect back. When you moved into third and you see them going side by side, did you think you had a chance to still win this race? I thought I had a chance if uh, they were racing pretty tough, they were going to take each other out. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we kind of had speed to get close, but as soon as I got too close, you know, I just didn't have enough grip and the car was sort of loose again. I could run the high line, but it's obviously uh, a lot of track distance up there and I couldn't close in enough. So, you know, uh, I think we would have had enough if they kept racing as hard as they were, maybe to get one or two of them. But, uh, you know, tonight was a good night, good night for points, and, and uh, just glad uh, we brought the car back home. An amazing run from 23rd to 3rd, Bob. Scott Dixon finishes in third, J.R. Hildebrand fourth, and Dario Franchitti, who led the most laps, 172, finished in fifth position. We'll try to catch up with him, and we'll review the current point standings when we come back. Back at Iowa Speedway, where Marco Andretti has won the Iowa Corn Indy 250. Let's take a look at the point standings at the midway point of the year. Will Power now is 20 behind, having... Uh, crashed out early tonight. Scott Dixon is 73 behind. Oriole Serbia now fourth. Canon moves up one. Ryan Briscoe up one. Graham Rahal fell two positions. Marco up four with the win here tonight. And J.R. Hildebrand jumps up two positions tonight in the point standings. Now Lindy is with Dario. Things really seem to change for you after that final pit stop and Marco beat you in the race off pit road. What happened there? Yeah, we had a problem with the left front. Um, I guess the, the gun, he was taking it off and then something happened and it went straight back on. So actually the pit stop was finished and he was still pulling the, the tire off and that allowed Marco to get to get past. And then uh, the, last, the restart, did not, not a bad restart, but then TK drafted with Marco, got past on the inside. And when those guys started running side by side, battling for position, there was no clean air to be had. And uh, just as the way things go, that coincided with the car getting really oversteery. So <laughs> I about knocked the wall down off before a couple of times. Um, one time I allowed Scott to go past, then uh, one time I allowed JR to go past. So at that point, I was fighting an oversteery car. I knew we were, you know, I was, I was trying to keep Briscoe behind. I knew Will had had his problem. Luckily, I hear he's okay because that looked a pretty sore hit. Um, and that was a, that was the story of our night, really. The car was really good out front, pretty fast, but. Uh, the way we had it set up again, it wasn't much good in traffic. But uh, we didn't, as a team, we didn't, we didn't execute tonight. Marco did a hell of a job. So did Tony. So did Dixon. Man, last the third, that was cool. So we just didn't get it done tonight. There's now 20 points between you and Will, but do you know he can still make that up? But we're only halfway through. Dude, I mean, we're we're talking about points. Everybody's getting excited about points. Points. 
I mean, each point's important right now, but I'm not thinking about points. I'm thinking about, I was trying to think about trying to win this thing tonight, um, which is why I almost knocked the wall down. <laughs> but um, yeah, he'll, I'm glad to see he's okay. We'll have that fight in the Toronto and uh, we'll, we'll keep going. Dario taking these races one by one, Bob. And let's go down to Kevin Lee. And a strong run for the Indianapolis 500 runner-up, J.R. Hildebrand finishes fourth. Good night for you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, really good night for the whole you know, National Guard Panther Racing crew. Uh, I mean, the car was car was really good all night, so that was uh, that was big for us. And, you know, there at the end, I felt like, man, if we had, you know, 20, 30 more laps, we, we might have been able to make a run to the front there. The car was, car was really good in traffic, and, uh, you know, that certainly made my job out there easier. You had a big save on pit road coming out with all kinds of traffic, very tight. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I kind of got bogged down a little bit uh, coming around Danica's pit because she was in the pit stall right in front of us. She was pitting after us, and man, I got the thing a little squirrely trying to save it. You know, there was a car next to me, and then Marco came out right in front of me. So, uh, you know, we, we lost a couple of spots on the on the pit road there. But man, afterwards, I was just, you know, thinking, "Ooh, man, I'm glad we didn't lose a wing or, or stuff it into the wall." So, uh, you know, tight racing out there all the way around. Yeah, and late in the race, uh, we're going to see you getting around Frank Keaty. You also had a close call with uh, Briscoe, who then got into EJ Viso. First, this is you getting around Dario. That's not that's not bad when you pass this guy. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, he was he was oh that well, I guess that was running uh, next to uh, next to Briscoe, getting into Viso there. I mean, that was just it's such close quarters out there, and everybody kind of got jammed up. Viso was was definitely loose. I think he was trying to get to the bottom. Everybody was trying to get underneath him, um, and I just I like lost all my air trying to fit into a gap there in the bottom. So I mean, honestly, just really happy that uh, nothing nothing bad happened there with the contact for Viso. Good run, good points tonight for J.R. Hildebrand too. He moves into the top ten, Bob. That's a heck of a trophy that Marco and Ready is displaying as winner of the race. Very much sought after, I might add, by the drivers in this series, but Marco Andretti will take it home tonight. J.R. Hildebrand, one of two rookies in the top 10, James Hinchcliffe finished in ninth position. Marco Andretti wins in Iowa. Welcome back to Iowa Speedway. Ryan Briscoe's PPG Automotive Refinish Team were the Firestone Pit Performers tonight, spending a total of one minute, 26 and a half seconds on pit lane. Congratulations to Ryan Briscoe and his team. Ryan finished sixth. Here's Lindy. Obviously, things good in the pits, but not so good with the tire pressures tonight. Talk about that. Yeah, we sort of we were going up and down a little bit with them, and uh, for our second and third sets of tires, we, uh, we were too low on the pressures, and I just couldn't get them up to up to speed, and we went backwards on a couple of those restarts, which really cost us a lot of time because in the pits, we were awesome and kept making up positions today. We were the quickest on pit road, which is just awesome. Um, but we kept losing positions on the restarts until we got it together for the final uh, set of tyres and, and we were lightning quick I and mean, we had a really good car when it was when it was all connected and uh, it was really close racing tonight. I uh, love this track at Iowa. Um, you know, very happy to you know put on a show like this for the PPG Automotive Refinish car. Did you think maybe you could get Dario? Well, I thought I had him at one point. I got a run on him through three and four, went down the inside of him in one and two and when I was just stuck on the bottom, you know, he raced me hard and I just picked up too much understeer and, and couldn't finish the job. So it was a real shame. I thought I was going to gain another spot there, but uh, really good racing. Uh, you know, I want to thank the fans as well. I mean, the, the place was packed and uh, the Iowans here, they, they love IndyCar racing and, and we love coming here. Let's hear from your teammate, Elio. He's with Robbie. Well, Elio, there's no country song. If I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. And that seems to be the case for you. <laughs> Another cut tire. Unbelievable. I was following, actually, Tony and uh, and uh, Dario so that I would not have that problem. But unfortunately, we got it again. I got to talk to Firestone guys to see what's going on. What do I need to do to not have a flat tire? But uh, in the end of today, it was just a misfortune. But now, uh, we're great comeback, uh, great pit stop from the boys, and uh, I'm glad we finished top 10. What was it like for you? I mean, you came up through the entire field just about. I mean, Scott Dixon went 23rd to 3rd. You had to pass almost everybody in a lap and a half down. Yeah, that was the toughest one. I was like, when I was a lap down, I was like, come on. I mean, can we catch a break? But uh, we finally did, and we were able to go. Our uh, car wasn't easy. I, left, I have to say, it was. I had some pretty good moments, and uh, hopefully you guys go. Speaking of those moments, I think see. we have one. Oh, my goodness. I, I want to see that because let me tell you, look at that, guys. That was something else. All of a sudden, we hit the bump and boom! Oh my goodness! I felt like Rick Mears at one point, and I, but unfortunately, it wasn't the end. Like winning the race, I had fun. Like I said, it was tough, uh, very dicing, uh, a lot of shoving, people shoving my, uh, me and others. But uh, in the end of the day, it was a great night. I know it was a high pucker moment. I just wanted to put a smile on your face. You've moved up from 13th to 12th now in the overall standings. Wow. 
<laughs> I thought you were going to say 11 at least. <laughs> no, no, it's only 12. That's okay. Hey, we're going to go it's ch chipping away a little bit by little bit, so hopefully we're going to get there one day. Just keeps on fighting, Bob. Keeps on fighting. <laughs> what a guy. Elio Castroneves finishes seventh here tonight. Marco Andretti still doing interviews down there after winning tonight's race here at Iowa. We'll be back to give you our final thoughts here in the booth in a moment. Here are the results of the Iowa Corn Indy 250. Marco Andretti the winner. Tony Kanan finishes second. Scott Dixon his fifth consecutive top ten. J.R. Hildebrand his second top five. Uh, Indy of course was the other. James Hinchcliffe has his fourth top ten of the season. Danica Patrick started in second position and finished in 10th. There you see the other drivers on the lead lap. Alex Lloyd the last. Oriole Servia had a good race but uh, some pit problems dropped him back to a lap down and there were several drivers out of the race when the checkered flag fell. So guys how did you well let's take a look at the rest of the drivers who uh, who finished this race, Will Power, back in 21st after a very hard hit, and he has a mild concussion. Will he be able to start the race in two weeks at Toronto? That is the next question. All right, guys, how'd you like that? That was amazing. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's, that's the kind of race that just sums up why I love IndyCar racing so much. And like I said, I love you guys a lot, but that really made me <laughs> want to be in the race car. Very intense racing, side by side. I think we saw a great winner. It's the first race win for Marco in a long, long time. Yep. Great for Andretti Autosport. And, you know, like I say, it was it was as if you were on a roller, for these drivers, mm -hmm. like a roller coaster, that drop sensation. They were doing that for 250 laps. <laughs> exactly, but it, it felt like it, it went so quick because yeah. it was so exciting. So uh, I really enjoyed the race. So and Dan, I. you know how competitive it is, not only on the track, but off. And there was some strategy that was being played. What they did for Marco Andretti, they went, ran a little more down for. So he was vulnerable when he was in the front, but when he was behind, he was a rocket ship. And that's when they said, we don't know how we'll run up front, but that was a great gamble and it paid off. So that is the end of the current streak of ovals. We go next in two weeks to Toronto for a street race uh, and a totally different kind of racing that we'll see there. Yeah, and we had big championship implications today. We saw Will, Will Power out of the race, and, you know, he feels very comfortable on these road and street-type tracks, and, you know, he's going to want to capitalize on that. But don't let's forget, he has a slight concussion. Will he be able to be back? That's going to be the interesting storyline leading up to Toronto. And as we leave the Ovals for a while, Dario leads Scott Dixon by three points in the A.J. Foyt Oval Championship. So that's the story from Iowa Speedway near Newton, Iowa.